In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Tuesday, God willing, will be the first day of the new Coptic year. So while we are ending this year, 1739, and starting the new Coptic year, 1740, the Church reads to us today this parable of the unjust steward. And many people have questions about this parable because as it is clear he was unjust why the master commended him and what are the lessons that we may learn from this parable the first lesson actually that we are stewards here on earth and our life will end as the year ends as the day ends our life will end Sooner or later, our life will end. We will stand before God to give an account of our steward. As he said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. And what any owner expect from stewards? At least two things, wisdom and faithfulness. That's why the Lord said, who is the wise and faithful steward? God gave each one of us many talents. There are common talents or gifts to all of us, like time, like health, like money. All these are given to all of us. But to each one of us, we're given a specific talent, very specific for you. And the question here, when God will ask you to give an account of your stewardship, Are you faithful? Are you wise in using these talents to the glory of God or not? If every night we spend like 10 minutes asking ourselves these two questions, am I wise in using the talents? Am I faithful in using the talents or not? Then when our life ends and we stand before God and God asks us to give an account of our stewardship, we will know how to answer before God. That is the first lesson. The second lesson, when actually this unjust steward knew that the master will end his stewardship as our life will end, and he will hold him accountable, he started to plan, what should I do? And the way he acted, he called the debtors of his master and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. And to the second, he told him, how much do you owe my master? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. So he told him, take your bill and write 80. Was it right? Definitely not. But some people in defense of this steward, they said this was his commission. So he dropped his commission. Whether this interpretation is right or wrong, but the lesson here is that he planned for the future. What would I do if my master took the stewardship from me? What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. So he started to plan. When the master commended this steward, he did not commend him for being not faithful, definitely not. But he commended him because he started to think about the future. What shall I do when my master takes the stewardship from me? That's why the Lord said, the sons of this world are more shrewd in this generation than the sons of light. What does it mean? the sons of the world more shrewd than the sons of light. The sons of the world usually make plans for the future. Retirement plan, 401k, life insurance. So they have plans what they are going to do. And they plan for their life as if they live hundreds of years. But the children of light, we don't plan for our eternal life. Usually our plans, like the children of the world, has to do with this life here on earth. We don't think about our eternal life. That's why he said the children of the world are more shrewd, because they are thinking about their future. But we don't think about our heavenly future. Are we ready 
if God calls us today to give an account of our stewardship, are we ready? Can just pause for one second and ask yourself this question. Are you ready right now? And if the answer is no, what are you waiting for? What are we waiting for? We don't know when the master would come at any hour. Every day we hear people depart in different years of their age. What are we waiting for? This parable the church read it to us before the end of this year by few days to tell us, be wise, be wise and plan for your heavenly future. Then the Lord gave us three advices based on this parable. The first advice he told us, I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. And the first question, what is the unrighteous mammon? Should I give money illegal and then give it to the poor? Definitely not. The unrighteous mammon is everything here on earth. If it is compared to the heavenly riches, the true riches. Why it is called here unrighteous mammon? Number one, because this is the fall of Adam and Eve, the earth is cursed. So everything here, if we compare it to the righteousness in heaven, it's unrighteous. The second thing actually, regardless how careful we are and how faithful we want to be, nobody actually is faithful 100% in his life. In a way or another, we are unfaithful. So what we have here, in a way or another, is not 100% righteous. The Lord told us, now you need to make friends with the unrighteous man. Make friends, there are many opportunities in front of us to help the poor. And here I'm not speaking only about financial help. Yes, financial help is important, but a word of support, a word of advice, encouragement, asking about the poor, visiting the sick, visiting the prisoners, comforting a sorrowful heart. That's how to make friends. Be merciful. Be merciful. As the Lord said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And when you are merciful, that is actually how you make friends with others. You know the story of the Good Samaritan. There was enmity between the Samar- Samaria and Judea. But when the Good Samaritan saw the Jewish man half alive, half dead, and he helped him, he turned him from his enemy to be his friend. So he made friendship. And what did he do? He showed mercy as the Lord explained his action. He showed mercy to this Jewish man because he was able When we speak about mercy, we speak about four things. The ability to see the needs of others, to develop compassion in our heart, to extend our hands to help them, even if they are our enemies. That's mercy. Mercy, the ability to see the sufferings of others, to develop compassion in your heart, to extend your hand to help them, and even if they are your enemies, and thus you're going to make them your friends. When we make friends and we use what we have, talents, money, gifts, to help others, we are making friends. And if we show mercy, God will have mercy upon us. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's why the Lord said, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. The second advice he told us to be faithful. He who is faithful on what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what's least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, what we have here, who will commit to your trust the true riches in heaven? Are you faithful? Are you faithful in your time? Or do you waste your time? Are you faithful in your money? Are you faithful in your talents? Are you faithful 
in your energy, how you use your health, is it to glorify God or for vain activities? Are you faithful in your studies? Are you faithful in your work? Are you faithful? We need actually, in order to be God entrust us with the true riches in heaven, we need to show faithfulness here. Who is the wise and faithful steward? God wants us to be faithful. The third advice that the Lord gave us here, if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Everything we have it here on earth is not ours. We born naked and we will die and we leave the world naked. Everything we have here, not ours. If what we have here is not ours, usually a person is more careful, that's the, the expectation, to be more careful in what belongs to others than what belongs to you. So here the Lord said, now if you are not faithful in what belongs to another, who will commit your trust what is your own? The heavenly inheritance, it is our own inheritance. Because God in his love, he accepted us to be his children. When we were baptized, we entered into the family of God. We became his children. And that's why we call him our father. The heavenly inheritance is our own inheritance. Here God is testing our faithfulness in things that, number one, not important because unrighteous, and number two, not belong to us, to see our faithfulness. If we prove to be faithful in the unrighteous mammon that is not ours, then God actually will entrust us with the heavenly riches and he will give us our own inheritance. Today, again, since we are ending this year, the church is asking us to be faithful. In Hebrews chapter 3, St. Paul addressed the point of faithfulness when he told us, Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him, to God the Father, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his habits. So he told us, consider, observe, and you have two examples. The example of the Lord Jesus Christ, who was faithful to God the Father. God the Father, when he sent his son to the world, he appointed him with a mission. And he was faithful to fulfill this mission. That's why in in John chapter 17, in his final prayer before going to Gethsemane and be arrested, he said to the Father, the work you have entrusted me to do, I have finished it. St. Paul is asking us to consider our Lord Jesus Christ, who was faithful to the Father who appointed him. Who among us at the end of our life or at the end of this year, Who among us can say at the end of this Coptic year, God, the work that you assigned me to do in year 1739, I have accomplished. I have finished it. If we cannot say this word, then we are not faithful. But if you are saying, but this is Jesus Christ, God who became man. So St. Paul gave us another example, Moses. Moses, who also was faithful in his house. And in verse 5 he said, Moses indeed was faithful on his house, his here capital. So his house, not Moses' house, God's house. Moses indeed was faithful in God's house as a servant for a testimony of those things which should be spoken afterward. Moses understood he's a servant, he's a steward. And he was faithful in the house of God to the last breath. That's why God actually, at the end of his days, he told him, you were faithful on what's least, I will appoint you on what's much. The definition of success, many people, they evaluate the success by the fruit. But in Christianity, 
the success is evaluated by your faithfulness and your wisdom. Because sometimes God allows the fruit to come late. Or as he said, others have labored and you entered on their labor. So maybe I'm reaping the fruit of somebody worked hard before me. So if I'm living the, uh, uh, reaping the fruit of somebody before me, I cannot give credit. And this actually can deceive me. There is fruit here, but it's not my fruit. That's why success is by faithfulness. In the book of Revelation, it says, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The Lord said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful on what's least, I will appoint you on what's much. Let us take these two days until the end of this year to think about faithfulness. Are we faithful in our talents? Are we faithful in whatever God gives us or not? So we'll be ready to give an account for our stewardship. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.